Hey everybody, it's Jeff here once again with Entrepreneur Essentials here at T-Works. And I am here with a very special guest today, my good friend Diego Segura. Um, Diego is a 17-year-old entrepreneur. Um, we met, God, probably about two months ago now? Yeah, in January. So. Yeah. Um, and I was just incredibly impressed with how much he had really focused ahead of time on trying to build a business even before he's graduated high school. Mm -hmm. um, probably the most forward-thinking 17-year-old that I know and has really worked very hard to network and get to know people and, and ask for help when he needed it and has been part of our Entrepreneurs Guild here at T-Works and been an active participant in that program. So. I uh, wanted to really interview him today, find out a little bit about his piece of the of the pie and, and growing his business. So right down below me is our subscription button. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel because if you don't, you're going to miss awesome interviews like this. And this is a bonus interview this week. We've done three interviews this week. So with that, Diego, tell me a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey so far. Yeah, so uh, Jeff kind of covered it. I'm 17 right now. and. Uh, as you know, you've, you've known me for about two months and that's pretty much as long as I've been on the scene really mm -hmm. networking and getting to know people uh, here in Leander, Cedar Park and, and generally in Austin. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm 17, I'm a junior in high school and I'm graduating early in December of 2018 this year. And uh, the journey for the last six months has really, it really started over a summer job that I had. Uh, I worked for Chesmar Homes as an intern and because my mom worked there, I was able to get an internship, and that was very lucky and you know, forever thankful to them, and the team was awesome. Um, so take this with a grain of salt, but the one thing that I learned most was that I didn't want to work for anybody else. <laughs> I, I learned that very quickly. <laughs> You're in the right audience here. Yeah, for sure. So, <laughs> they are too. Yeah, so I never wanted to, I didn't want to work for anybody else, and you know, I probably will in, in certain industries and mm. maybe going to work in an, an agency, but. That was the moment that near the end of my tenure there, at the end of that summer internship, that's when I bought the domain name that I'm currently operating under, uh, which we'll get to in a second. And, um, and I started thinking, how can I present my skills in a marketable way? And how can I develop a business around it and make money doing that while in school and low overhead? Obviously, I wasn't going to go uh, travel to the valley. Don't and have a fine place to live, that's right, good. Exactly, yeah. so super low overhead, very low expenses. Um, and being in school, I have time. Mm -hmm. That's and and also being young, I have time. So there's a lot of leverage, and I realize if I just got on the path instead of trying to read a bunch of business books, because I've read a lot throughout my life, and uh, instead of doing more of that, I wanted to dive in and continue to study, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but it's been a crazy learning experience these last six months. Uh, so I'll go ahead and explain what I do. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your your business yeah. and where you're going. Yeah. So there's really two paths right now for me uh, that I'm building. So first I have a company called Third Breath and Third Breath we do brand identity design. Now the reason it's brand identity specifically is because very early on I read Blair Enns' Win Without Pitching Manifesto and one of the fundamental tenets in that book, it's an excellent book, highly recommended for anybody in the creative sector or, or even in any sort of agency model, is specializing. Because you, I, could, I started out saying I'm a graphic designer, <laughs> hire me. Which is, which is great, but there are plenty of people saying, I'm a graphic designer, hire me. So I wanted to specialize and say, this is very specifically my skill set. I can build a logo, I can build brand guidelines, and I can build really good brand guidelines. There's plenty of graphic designers that they'll ship you a logo, uh, and it comes with a one-page brand guideline. It's not comprehensive, and there wasn't a lot of thought, there wasn't a lot of framework, so that's what I build the business around. Um, and I've had very few clients. I've had only three paying clients so far and, and some other pro bono work in the last couple of months, which one might say, obviously, if it was a real agency, three clients would not be keeping the boat afloat. Uh, 
but again, that Pretty sort of low overhead. Yeah, yeah, very low overhead. So I'm still profitable, mm -hmm. which is extraordinary. Um, so that's that's one track, and then the other track is me. Mm -hmm. uh, building my platform, building my site recently. This has just been in the last month, uh, starting in March. And again, coming to Entrepreneurs Guild, talking to Jeff, talking to Omari, that he also comes to Entrepreneurs Guild. Um, and talking to these people, a lot of emphasis is put on the personal platform. Mm -hmm. And having a platform that people come to me and they say, we wanna hear from you. Which is interesting because a lot of that is built on being a thought leader. And I'm 17, so what do I lead in thought? Uh, and, and of course, that can hold anybody back. There are 30, 35 year olds that are there saying. Are 70 year olds that don't think they're a thought leader. Exactly. Yeah. And, and aren't. The primary <laughs> difference is just that um, I'm willing to put it out there and you know, mm -hmm. I, wanna, I wanna give it a shot. And putting things on the record, for example, I've, you know, I've said it plenty of times on my blog that there are problems with public education, for example. And that's, that's kind of the second path that I'm going on, but uh, there are problems with that. And I make, I make bold predictions and I make these bold statements that a lot of people react adversely to, but other people that may be more futurists, more entrepreneurial, more, um, more they identify with what I'm saying, they see it as genius. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really, that, that means the world to me to be able to have a platform. So it's third breath right now and then developing my personal platform. Uh, and the big first step, and I was just talking to Jeff before this, is my book that'll be coming out. There's the news. So I'll do some uh, do some pre pre promotion. It's called the Dropout Manifesto, and of course people hear that and they say, well, dropping out that's not a good idea, and it's not. Mm -hmm. um, dropping out of high school sure isn't a good idea. Dropping out of college isn't a great idea. It's not a horrible idea. It's definitely a less bad idea. Mm -hmm. um, but really, the manifesto is about dropping into your own education. The problem with school is that you can go to four <coughs> years of high school, you can go to four years of college. Mm -hmm. At the end of it, all you will have is that four years of high school and that four years of college. Yep. Um, obviously, if they were teaching what I'm doing in school right now, this would not be such a special occurrence. Yeah. Um, so obviously they're not teaching these things. Mm -hmm. And of course, not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur, but I still think these are valuable skills. Yeah, I mean, um, even if you're, you know, I, I, for me, you know, the, the next book that I'll write mm -hmm. is basically on understanding that for 25 years of my life, longer than you've been alive, I was an entrepreneur inside of companies. Yeah. And I was scared to jump. Mm -hmm. I was scared to get out. I was scared to not have the guaranteed paycheck. Yeah. And I had many periods of time where I was extraordinarily happy, mm -hmm. and I had many times where I was miserable. And analyzing it after I got out and became an entrepreneur, I realized that the times that I was the happiest was when I got put on projects. Mm -hmm. When I was with Fidelity Investments, I was put on projects that we would, you know, it was like, okay, Jeff, here's kind of an idea that we have. Go for it. Make this happen and come back and tell us how to make this work. And I would get to do that. I'd get to parachute in, create this project, make it happen, work with all the parties involved, get it done, come back. Here's how it is. It's all buttoned up. Somebody else run it. Now let me go on to the next project. Mm -hmm. When I was then with firms that it was like, okay, here's your box color within the box, I was miserable. And that's, that's a, being experience. an entrepreneur, yeah. you know, that's that's realizing that I was, and you know, if you're gonna continue to work in corporate America or mm -hmm. the corporate world, and you're an entrepreneur by trade or by temperament, then you've gotta make sure you understand that and you go for jobs that keep you in that kind of a role constantly, mm -hmm. or if not, you're going to be miserable. And I mean, I spent a lot of miserable years yeah. doing that. So, and that's kind of the I fundamental tenet. Yeah, yeah. I, I applaud you of saying, you know what? Maybe you go back to school later. Maybe you go get a very technical. Mm -hmm. I need this, but you are well rounded and you're you're learning. And hopefully, we're all giving you an education oh, as yeah. well outside oh, yeah. of you know, it's kind of our little tribe. Mm -hmm. at, you know, educating you, so. Yeah, and that's kind of the fundamental tenet of, of the dropout manifesto yeah. is that not everybody is going to literally drop out of school. Mm -hmm. Not everybody should, but we're all dropouts in, in a sense, mm -hmm. and that's just like you said, being in corporate America and wanting to get out, that's dropping out. Yeah. 
That is a, that's a massive dropout Big situation. Big dropout. Yeah, and Big that's dropout all that it's about. That's for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a completely different life, and and you have to you have to develop new ways, unconventional ways to find success and to do it. So that book is you know that's something I've really taken a lot of pride in, mm -hmm. um, and I, I can't wait to for it to come out and for people to be able to buy it on Amazon. I wish I could deliver it today, but. Um, Keep it's your just, eye out for it. Yeah, definitely keep your eye. It'll be well, it'll be around. And soon. my promise is, and here's your here your bonus. Right, you get it when it's getting ready to come out. You come back on the show, and we'll talk about it in more detail. That sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah I'll right. definitely be back right. sometime soon. All right, so fast five questions now. All right. You wake up in the morning. Business is totally gone. Five hundred bucks in your pocket. Laptop, computer, all the knowledge in your head, place to live. Mm -hmm. What do you do first? Uh, so I, I wake up and I'd probably say, good morning mom, good morning dad, like I do every morning because that would be uh, you know, my place to live. It, it's funny, this question is, is largely... <laughs> it's okay. kind of the world you're in yeah, today. It's, it's yeah, it's pretty much the world I'm in today, <laughs> which um, gives, it gives a good idea because what I would do is obviously what I'm doing now because it pretty much is my world, but really I'll explain it from, you know, from the start of my morning. I wake up at 4.45 and by 4.50 I'm on my computer making sure that everything is ready for the rest of the day. Um, and pretty much every day business starts up again. Mm -hmm. there, I don't have too many systems in place where I feel inhibited or, or that obviously I don't I have very low overhead, I don't have seven employees or something. Mm -hmm. It's very agile. So in the morning it's, it's pretty much like a new sale is happening every day, a new networking opportunity is happening every day. So in reality, I do exactly what I do. I'd wake up and I'd start reaching out to people and I'd say, "Hey, you know, I worked with you a couple months ago, uh, or I worked with you in, in a past life, or whatever. I know so and so. Do you know anybody that would need work?" It would be that sort of outreach. And I and again, like you said, if all I had was was what was in my head, mm -hmm. I have design skills and I have ability to copyright, so I can use those to to leverage and. I can leverage those to create a business, and really, that's what I'm doing right now. So, uh, I you know I don't mean to ruin the question. No, but but, but I mean it's true. I yeah, mean, it, it, I, you're living this life. Yeah. So I, I think that's actually an interesting and intriguing way. Is yeah. You know what? I'm going to go out, meet a bunch of people, see if they can help me, mm -hmm. and see if they can connect me to the right people. Yeah, and and the five hundred dollar number is also interesting as well because mm -hmm. really I started this business on on very little money, mm -hmm. which was I bought a domain name. I set up a website, set up a small portfolio, mm -hmm. um, minimal amounts of time just to set up and, and mm -hmm. build a portfolio that was presentable on the internet uh, and put that work into that form. That's really and, it. And the scary thing is there's half businesses that, there actually 60% of businesses don't even have a website. Which is amazing. You know, and, Absolutely and amazing. is yours perfect? No. No. It was it perfect from the beginning? Nope. Nope. Not, a, not in the slightest. Yeah. But you got it out there. Mm -hmm. It's at least something, and yeah. you exist as a business at that point. That's so what, that's what matters. Take some advice from a seventeen-year-old. Just get it done. Yeah, you and know, get it done right. Yeah, get it done right. But it doesn't have to be perfect right mm -hmm. away. Because guess what? Nobody knows who you are. Nobody cares who you are at the beginning. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it up. Yeah, minimum viable product, lean startup. Yep. Another book recommendation. Mm -hmm. I've got tons of them. But absolutely. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your biggest business mistake that you've made. So talking about the website, talking about brand building, obviously my big thing was when I started it, I didn't know that I was going to specifically specialize in branding yet. Mm -hmm. So at first I was just, I was thinking I'm going to brand myself as a graphic designer, I'm a full service designer. Uh, that, 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 that's a mistake in its own, mm -hmm. that's not even the one I was, I was going to say, so well, I'll throw two in here. but. The first mistake was obviously not positioning myself, but again, very quickly I was able to self-correct, mm -hmm. mostly because of the relentless learning. Uh, and that's not to pat myself on the back. This is, you know, years and years of being reinforced that learning is important. The only reason I had the skills was because I wanted to keep learning. So, alongside building my business, I never decided, okay, the books go away now. Mm -hmm. The books don't go away, and they never go away. Mm -hmm. I, before I walked in here, I was reading for 20 minutes before, you know, before I even showed up here. Mm -hmm. I'm reading constantly, so that was a self-correction that happened, repositioning, yeah. learning that from the books I read. Uh, but the big mistake was, and it's not really a big mistake, because like you said, it was so low stakes. The, one of the mistakes I made was I wanted to do my website by hand, mm -hmm. by myself, yep. mostly out of pride. 
which is a horrible reason. <laughs> and I think a lot of, and, th and this again is a, a paradigm that a lot of CEOs, mm -hmm. small business CEOs deal with, yeah. is I want to do it all myself mm -hmm. because I'm the best at it. Yeah. Which is not true. We're not. We're not, not the best not at the it. Slightest. I might be an excellent designer. I can tell you what looks good. Yep. I cannot sit in HTML yes. and CSS four days and create yes. a website that that's beautiful. The, uh, the thank God for Wix. Yeah. Because that's, it makes somebody as untalented. Mm -hmm. Wix and Canva make me actually talented. Yeah. Because I can, I, I can look at it mm -hmm. and know, and I come from an advertising background. Yeah. That was my original job. And so I can look at it and I can tell you this looks right. Yep. The technical skills are much yeah, more difficult. Yeah, technical skills of making it there, but mm -hmm. things like Canva and things like like Wix now. Yeah, it's you Squarespace know, you need, as well. Yeah, Squarespace, you know, Squarespace, Weebly, not a big fan of, but yeah. Wix is Wix is where I build all my new websites, mm -hmm. you know, and I've got seven, eight, nine yeah. websites now. Wix is where I build my websites now just yeah. because it's quick, it's easy, and I can make it look the way I want it to look. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing was at the beginning, I wasn't using uh, again, it just because being kind of simple-minded, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I wasn't using anything like Squarespace, Wix, Weebly, yeah. anything like that. I yeah. You're trying to quite WordPress Quite literally, yeah. I didn't even have WordPress. Okay. I quite literally had hand-coded HTML pages oh, line by line. And again, that was a pure pride thing that yeah. I wanted to say, this was hand-coded by me. Mm -hmm. um, namely <laughs> because I had a computer science teacher that for many years, he had a personal website. He was kind of my introduction to personal brand, but uh, his website always at the bottom said Graham Personal Mitchell yeah. and hand coded by Graham Mitchell and I always thought well that's cool he's a computer science teacher he mm -hmm. knows how to get in there and do markup languages mm -hmm. like nobody's business yeah I'm less skilled yes and it that was and, I think and the, the amount of time first. that you waste yeah doing that I mean yes it's nice that you can right and and it's a good exercise and you're far ahead of many that that are out there yeah but no it ain't reason the smartest to do that. thing if you're if you're trying to run a business, right? Yeah. And and that that would be advice, especially if uh, you know. I'm, I imagine some of my friends are watching this right now. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to start a business, start as quickly as possible yep. and fail as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you're not going to take the advice of spending the money to build a website correctly mm -hmm. with some sort of platform that does cost a little bit of money, um, even if you're not going to do that. At least go out there and build it now, so that yep. you can fail quicker, yep. and then discover it quicker. Just like I did, just like Jeff has, just like most of us have. Yep. Um, build, measure, learn. Again, back to lean startup methodology, mm -hmm. but yep. get it going and get it going now. Yep. And then figure it out. And, mm -hmm. I mean, I, there's four websites I have that are dormant that I don't do anything on because yep. I kind of lost interest in that business mm -hmm. or that idea, but they're still out there. They you still know, exist. And I may go back to them some point in right. time. Um, so tell me a little bit about a, a book you've said a couple one book yeah one book that you would recommend most for an entrepreneur hmm so I'm gonna throw a book out there and I, I have mentioned it hmm. in in the course of this episode but I want to go a little bit more in depth Blair ends okay Blair E N N S hmm. uh, the win without pitching manifesto okay this is an excellent book and specifically for entrepreneurs like if, if you're looking for biographies my recommendation would be Steve Jobs but yeah. For entrepreneurs specifically, especially in creative especially services, the creative side. Yeah. yeah, Blair Enns writes the Win Without Pitching Manifesto, and it's excellent, absolutely excellent. And he talks about this idea of pitching and walking up to somebody saying, "Hey, Jeff, oh. I do design. I'm going to pitch you on this grand idea." And oh. really, Jeff didn't want to hear that. Uh, what Jeff wanted is a partner. Oh. He didn't want a vendor. Yeah. And most people don't want a vendor. Uh, sometimes you can you can slide by doing. $200 projects as a designer, you absolutely can. But I don't commodity. recommend it. Yeah, you're a, you're commodity. a commodity at that point. And the Win Without Pitching Manifesto, quite frankly, even if you're not in the creative services industry, I would highly recommend reading it, especially if it's an introduction to business and good business practices. Blair Enns is a genius. Uh, and if you are in the creative services industry, it's enormously relevant. And then, of course, he has another book called Creative Pricing, or Pricing Creativity, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of a follow-up to the one without pitching manifesto. But that book is absolutely excellent. And again, to, to show that it's valuable in multiple fields, uh, my father's in new home sales, and he's read that book cover to cover mm -hmm. and absolutely loves it. He does not run his own business. 
He has nothing right. to do with creative services, and he got enormous value out of that book. Even though I'm sure a lot of the terms in that book flew over his head, the general yeah. concepts make so much sense for business people in general, so I highly recommend that book. Awesome, very cool. What's a tool that you use in your business every day that you might recommend? A tool? Uh, one tool that I, I'm gonna imagine most people have is G Suite, yeah. which would be the Google Suite of apps. Uh, the second person in yeah. two interviews that said that. Yeah, so G Suite's <laughs> amazing, and I, but though I figured that somebody said that, so I wanna give something a little more niche, um, and, and maybe it's not niche, maybe a lot of people know about this and I just haven't talked mm -hmm. to them about it. I use a service called Interseller. Hmm. Uh, Interseller.io is the name, These, it's a small company, I believe there's three people, I've gotten in touch with the staff and they're awesome people, awesome yeah. people. And basically the platform is an email outreach platform. Okay. And it is absolutely excellent. It allows you to you know, import your contacts and mm -hmm. set up those sequences so that after seven days, okay. whatever, kind of drip nice. email stuff yeah. and all sorts of versatile. So like a constant contact type right. and all exactly. that. Right, okay. exactly. Uh, it's a little bit less fully featured than a constant contact or a convert kit, though I mm -hmm. use it all the time. Okay. I use it daily um, and it helps, it helps so much and I can see, you know, obviously there's there's people who suck at email outreach. I'm gonna throw that out there right now. You watching, you you might be one of the people that you're doing email outreach wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and and again, I've done so much so much building and measuring and learning in that. Interseller again, it it works with that. It does A/B testing extremely nice. extremely easily. Um, shows all your stats obviously in a very easy to use format. It's an excellent, excellent service. So nice. if you're if you're using an email outreach program, I definitely give it a shot. You get a seven day free trial. Okay. I wish they were paying me to say this, they're not. Yeah. But it's an excellent service so that my advocacy for it should speak to how good it is. That's fantastic. So how does somebody get a hold of you? There's a couple ways. Uh, obviously you can go to thirdbreath.com. That's T-H-I-R-D-B-R-E-A-T-H.com. Uh, and then you can also get in touch with me at diegodoes.com. That's D-I-E-G-O-D-O-E-S.com. DiegoDoes.com is uh, my personal website, uh, and, a, and that's kind of my handle on Twitter as well. It's mm -hmm. at Diego Does, so you can get a hold of me that way, and I definitely recommend going on my site and kind of exploring around there, because you'll find, you'll find me on LinkedIn there, you'll find me on Twitter, find my blog posts, find some of my articles that have been published elsewhere. Um, definitely go to my personal site and explore. It's awesome. All right, my friend. Well, thank you very much for coming over here today. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Uh, it's been a, a wonderful pleasure getting to know you over the last few months, mm -hmm. um, folks. This, you know, this this is an example of how I'm. I've continued to be incredibly impressed with our our upcoming generation. Um, there's a lot more Diegos out there than there were when I was at that point. Yep. I mean, I. I it took me until I was almost 45 to figure this out. You got it figured out now, my friend. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, one, if you need somebody that uh, can help you with branding, I've seen his work and it's really good. Thank you, I appreciate um, it. But also, you know, I applaud you for doing this. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm just excited to see when the book comes out, yep. I'm excited to see when you graduate mm -hmm. and, and where you take this to. And you know, you've always got a home here. So, all right. Uh, so everybody, thanks a lot for joining us once again. We are uh, on every Friday, and these things get published on Tuesdays. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel right down here. All the stuff that Diego talked about in the interview is down below here in the show notes page as well. And on podcasts, it's also, uh, it'll be on the, the podcast piece of it as well. So thanks, guys. Have a great day, and we will see you back here next week.